bitches. Welcome to the broadcast with Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. My name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is season four, episode 31, number 166. How's it going? Delightful. Good. Awesome. Happy Mardi Gras, everybody. That's right. right. I keep forgetting it's Fat Tuesday today. It is Fat Indeed. Tuesday today. Or I didn't do I anything to Tuesday. celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I didn't either. <laughs> wow we are such party animals <laughs> to be fair though i don't think i've ever celebrated fat tuesday yeah I've, me done neither. A, I've done a few times there used nice. to be this uh really great bar in uh new york called delta grill and it had a whole like cajun vibe to it and it was right around the corner from my office and it was the best and i loved it and they used to have a mardi gras party where they do like crawfish and they did like the whole thing and it was so great, but they went out of business. Oh no! Like that all the really good, like all the great things in New York City, the rent eventually comes for got you. Too, the rent got too high. The rent yeah. got too high, and Delta Grill is no more. And I have since stopped celebrating uh, Mardi Gras. I'm not even drinking oh. the right beverage. I'm drinking red wine. Could have. Uh, can... What is can the you right guys... beverage? Yeah, what is the right beverage? Blue Hurricane, right? Which That's... is. Is that a I New Orleans know. joke? No, it's it's like a um, like a Bourbon Street, like New Orleans cocktail. Mm-hmm. I think it's like their version of like a Long Island iced tea. I I believe hurricanes are are very hurricanes. Yeah, it's hurricane. I believe they're very boozy. Or I yeah, believe it. Or like a a beta. That's a that's a Louisiana beer I, that I would associate that. I don't know. I don't know. Guys, I am no expert. I've never even been to New Orleans. What am I doing spouting like I know what I'm talking about here? Someday we should all go. Oh, my God. I, I know. I have uh, I have never been to New Orleans or New Orleans or whatever it's called, but I is on my list. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever had a hurricane. But that being said, uh, is anybody giving up anything for Lent? I know that I'm the only Catholic on here, but I know Amanda has celebrated Lent before, at least. That's true. Only because it's like... It's like an your easy... second chance at a New Year's resolution. Yeah, and it's just like oh. an easy out. Like I used to give up drinking like pe- for Lent, and if you just said it was for Lent, people wouldn't like oh, question yeah. you about yeah, it that too. Because like otherwise, a- there's like, oh, why are you not drinking? Like, oh, what's wrong? Like, mm. like more so in my my twenties than now. I feel like yeah, you know, just sort of like you know, people are well, now yeah, people are except- like, cool. <laughs> Yeah, Great. but once you get into, your- I should do that too. <laughs> once you get into your thirties, though, and you and you're like, oh, I'm not drinking. They're like, are you pregnant? Why? Right. Why not? Also. Also. Yeah. Uh, JP is doing the same thing that he did last year. I believe you made this joke <laughs> last year, JP. <laughs> He's giving up the bit of ramble cast getting. after dark for Lent. <laughs> Consistent. I like it. Well, please do a jack of solid and make sure you at least download it, even if you don't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, for... For the better part of my life, I didn't even know that giving things up for Lent was a thing. Um, we went to a lot of church in the Lent period, but uh, mm. not having grown up Catholic, I didn't didn't realize that was a thing for a very long time. Um, and then I, you know, forgot about it until you just now said it. I'm kind of thinking that maybe I should give up something for Lent, just for the reasons you're saying, Amanda. Like it's kind of a nice. It's very and peak- also what you're saying, Colleen. It's a second, yeah, a second chance at a resolution. Yeah, it's very like yeah. peak Catholic. It's like you didn't do it this first time. Well, feel bad about it and then give it up for forty days instead. Yeah, <laughs> or do it for forty days. I know right. that some people do something for Lent instead of abstain from something, which is also good. Like um, forty yeah. days of yoga. I'm on day yeah. six of January. There you go. 30 days. I. <laughs> I am on day 18. Good job. And I started on January 2nd. (laughs) Hey, so we're about at the same pace. Right, basically. If I get like two or three videos in a week, I'm doing good. Uh, I am actually, we go back and I keep going like back and forth. Um, I think I'm going to give up. I was going to give up beer. And then I was like, eh, I think I'm going to give up like... 
either drinking at home or um, uh, give up like I think it's better if I give up like 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 hard liquor or something like mm. um, I don't know I haven't decided yet but I have two and a half hours to do it so I'll I'll figure it out <laughs> yeah. I don't know or I'm gonna try to exercise again or do something I, I mean I've like, 2020 has been very off for me so they have a lot of options of ways that i could go in the like self um i don't know self-improvement not improvement that's not about i don't feel like care self-care thank you i was like i haven't deproved but like (laughs) (laughs) in the self-care thing uh like so i don't know i've like barely exercised i have now hit 15 geocaches though nice nice goals i I am i'm almost up to my my 20 (laughs) <laughs> God's giving up drinking between eight and eight thirty p.m. That's great. That's, I think the great. Lord's gonna love that one. Yeah, um, that's, that's solid. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So, how was everybody's weekend? Shandy, how was your birthday? Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Welcome. Uh, to the it birthday was really club. fun. We had uh, a big like barbecue on Saturday. And my new thing is that, like, you know, evening parties, like, what's the point? Who's, who's rated? Who's living that life? So we had a barbecue, like, we called it a barbecue because it was a party. Um, we did barbecues and things, but um, we told people to come over, like, 1, 1 2. As, it, as the week progressed, I started pushing that back. But, you know, they were, it was early. And we had, like, drinks and, you know, just, like, we made a shit ton of food. And just kind of had a whole day event. And my thought was, you know, you do like a day thing and then like everyone's gone and like you have time to drink water and and sober up. Um, This was so much fun (laughs) that we actually did continue until about 11 o'clock. And I spent all of the next day recovering. Um, But yeah, I guess that's the sign of a good birthday party. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love daytime parties, especially when you can have them yeah. outdoors. That's kind of how I felt yeah. after my ne- my nephew's baptism. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I yeah. got on a plane the next morning at six. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, I'd, I mean, luckily, all so of that we... out for the bonus show. So nobody here has any <laughs> idea what I'm talking about, but they will when they listen to the bonus show, which we yeah. should have been recording this week. But I also realized when I went to clean off my hard drive on my laptop that I never posted the one we did last month. Oh, <laughs> oops. Bonus, so, bonus. It's <laughs> done though. You know, it's just like homework was done. We just didn't. It's not it d- I didn't finish my part. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. It's just not posted. It's okay. No one heard that. It's fine. I'll cover you. <laughs> I was like, why is this still on here? This was like four weeks ago. And then I was like, oh, holy shit, I never edited this. Because <laughs> we did the the Real Weird Sisters one. Anyway, sorry, Shandy, go ahead. You were talking about the, 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 your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> now, next to recover, well, JP is asking if I was ever possibly going to be a V-Day baby. Um, I was actually two weeks late. So I guess that would have put my due date at February 10th. So you so could have quite, been a VD. I blew past that. Yeah. That's what she said. Yeah, but you um, could have been. I was supposed to be a St. Patrick's baby. My original due date was March 19th. Damn. That's right. You were early. Yeah, early. I was in the yeah. hospital for 21 days. I was in the NICU. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I was two weeks late, and then my mother, as the story goes, gave yes, birth to me in a birthing chair in 57 minutes. So Yeah. Nice. She, you know what? She had had enough of you. She was done. Yep. You were done. <laughs> you were done, <laughs> though. You were done. You were You're like, done. let's do this living thing. I'm ready. Ready to go. <laughs> yeah. No, so we, um, yeah, honestly, the party went a little bit longer than I even planned. But that's like... It's those times where like you don't plan for something and then it happens just because you're having that much fun. So it was it was really good and um and then the next day I was it was a little bit rough, but like Frank did all the cleanup and I was very thankful for that. Um so I just kinda laid around and did nothing and uh drank water and then yeah, hung out mostly on the couch. It's a good place to be for this birthday party. It sounds oh, yeah, lovely. I think that's great. 
Yeah. And then yesterday was my actual birthday. And so I went to work and then um, after work, uh, Frank was still here. So we went on a little like short run uh, and then got a beer and then called it a birthday. I had so many birthday cakes. Holy shit. It was like, it was like the Thanksgiving pie of birthday cakes. Yes. What kind of cake? What kind of cake? Tell us the cakes. So my friend Sally made this big chocolate cake that this is the third year running that she's made it. It is the best chocolate cake in the entire world and what i love is that every year like leftovers then for the rest of the week so i still have a good four pieces left and every day for lunch i have a piece of chocolate cake so good um and then i have a couple friends who are bakers and they brought two different kinds of cake one is like a chocolate cake i haven't even tried it yet i'll have some some of that was left over and then another one is like uh this like uh, tart like it's it's a french they're french and they're french bakers um at a french bakery and so it's like it's like this sort of like fruity type tart thing i can't really explain it i'll show you guys a picture um but that looks really really good too and then they also brought two king's cakes <laughs> oh my like, goodness holy shit yeah because i didn't get to have king's cake in france or i did but it wasn't that good because it was like an early it wasn't time yet you're not supposed to have king's cake until january 6th ever i left before then um so they brought two of those and there's still leftovers of that so i have leftovers of wait that's two well no i think frank finished off one of the king's cakes so there's leftovers of one king's cake the chocolate cake the the fruit thing and then the other chocolate cake that's amazing <sighs> cake porn cake uh, porn <laughs> cake porn i would use cake porn as an episode title but i don't think i i can because we used porn last week but maybe yeah. i can call it bake shandy cake porn <gasps> Yeah. If I knew you were coming, I would bake a cake porn. <laughs> bake a cake porn. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I don't know that song, but I liked it. No. If I no. knew you were coming, I would bake a cake. No? Nope. Okay. So, But I wish everyone I ever met said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> so Dennis says that Mary Ellen chose the broadcast uh, over the post-debate spin show. And I have to say... We might be a hot mess at times, but we are not nearly a hot as much of a hot mess as this latest debate was, which I can't even talk about because it was so awful that I cringed the entire time. Damn. I almost watched some of it and then I was like, ah, I'm a week behind on Survivor. You know, it's oh, was did you watch it? Was it didn't you like did you like it? I'm just okay. at the challenge, so no spoilers yet, Oh, people. okay. That's, yeah, okay. Gott says that, uh, oh, so we're live for the patrons this week, for anybody who hasn't really uh, figured that out at this point. Um, if you'd like to be a patron at the Hangout level or more, you can go to patreon.com slash janjack and uh, smash that uh, Hangout level button. Uh, we are about to enter March, in which you can sign up under the March promotion that we do every year. Um, yeah. And then once March is over, it's up to you. You can stay at that same amount or you can, you know, move up to the the level that corresponds, like, to something higher um, to continue with the benefits. So uh, stay tuned for that, which will be, I guess, like, tomorrow from whenever this episode <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, patreon.com slash Jan Jack. Uh, Gott says that uh, St. Patrick's babies are the best. And that's right, because his birthday is St. Patrick's Day, which I did know. Wow. Uh, Matt wants to know, did your mom have the birthing equivalent of a squatty potty shandy? Apparently. <laughs> but I mean, it was a hospital birth. I don't know. Yeah. I sort of envision like the Handmaid's Tale. They give birth seated right i mean gravity's supposed to help you that's, yeah, that's no they, they don't give birth from. seated in the handmaid's tale they're on the bed because they do that whole like weird ass chanting shit they do do that whole weird ass chanting shit but don't they start on a chair there was uh, there was one someone was in a chair at one the, point. maybe the very I don't first know. time we saw birth right and i don't know if maybe that was like a complication thing or but yes no i know i am remembering similarly so that it was a thing cool um but um let's see what else oh matt also says fun fact shandy colleen and i are the same age as princess die when she uh, was when she died that is fucking crazy i don't know how fun that fact is but... yeah I know about that that is remember that moment that i discovered that i was a few years ago the same age that lorelei gilmore was when gilmore oh. first started airing oh, right. and i was like really shook that mm-hmm. after 
<laughs> well, age I is feel, relative. I am nowhere near as mature and accomplished as Princess Diana was when she died. Yeah, same. Wow, I have to. But I also wasn't born into the British aristocracy, so there is that. That true, Matt. I was talking about 2020 being a time for self care. <laughs> Ro says, excellent. I can see my broads rule throw from where I'm sitting. Well, picture or it didn't happen. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so I'm glad that you had a good birthday, Shandy. Was there anything else um, memorable or... It just looked like a really fun party and day, like, in all. It was, yeah, it was a good time. Um, Kayla actually gave me, not this last Christmas, but the Christmas before, she gave me this awesome list, like, notepad with, with like, for list making. Um, yeah. It's an RGB thing, and it says, um, like, feminist agenda. And I was like, hmm, what could I do with this? <laughs> so I put it out and asked people to add to our feminist agenda. So that was pretty fun. Oh, I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I did a thing this weekend. So oh. first we had a snow day, and that was great. Um, <laughs> You've had more snow than I've had here in New York. And we only had two inches, but, you know, and the city didn't even close down. But Two, two inches more, like a snow day? Two more inches than we've had. In Raleigh it does, yeah. Damn. Um, yeah, I love snow days down here. I used to hate them, but I love them now. Just because, you know, it, it was it was great. We took the kids to see... Oh, we took them both to see Jumanji, the new one. Oh, mm-hmm. And nobody yeah. got scared. They both really liked it. Um, nice. Because uh, Danny DeVito's character, while he's Danny DeVito, has a lot of, like, physical comedy. And at one point, Alex kept shouting every time he would, like, do something like, you know, f- a fall or something. He'd be like, silly, silly, silly goose, silly goose. And <laughs> just shout it. <laughs> and there was a couple – there were kids in the row behind us. But the couple next to us were clearly, like, a couple. And they clearly were, like, <laughs> wanted to kill us. But whatever. <laughs> Silly goose. Silly goose. goose. They were being silly gooses. I know they were. It was so cute, though. It was really cute. And then, um, yeah, but it was fun. It was it was a good time. Um, and the other thing that I did this weekend was canvas for Elizabeth Warren. That's (laughs) right. How was it? Tell us everything. Okay, so, um. I met them at the headquarters and I was a little bit of misunderstanding. Okay. This is classic me. Like what is peak me when it turns into them, something that should be very, you know, easy. Um, they had called me the night before and they were like, do you want to go to the carry location? Because there's been problem with people downtown having to pay for parking. And I was like, Oh, well I work in downtown Raleigh, so I'll just park and I have a private parking lot. So I'll just park at my office and I'll walk over. It's, it was like, you know, 0.8 tenths of a mile, which isn't that bad. I was like, you know, I'll just walk over. So, um, I did, I did that. I parked at work and I, I walked over to the headquarters and I get there and they're like, okay, well, you know, here's your packets. You're going to have to drive to where you're going. And I'm like, well, shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I tell the woman that like I was buddying up with, cause so what we were going to do is I was new so she was going to train me like on like, you know, five or 10 houses. And then I was going to supposed to drive to with my own pack of houses. I was supposed to drive to another neighborhood and do that. And I realized then, so I had taken the van and Jay had taken the boys to lunch and he was supposed to swing by my work on the way to Costco because it's like five minutes from Costco and he was supposed to swing by my work and switch out cars with me and I had run I ran into work to drop some stuff off and to pee before I walked down and I thought that I dropped my work keys in the van with the van key but what I had actually done was dropped the RAV4 keys the other car keys in the van with the van key so I reach into my pocket to get pull out the keys when I'm there and they're talking to me and realize that I have my office keys because I have three sets of keys and not my actual car keys for the Rev4. So I called Jay and he's super pissed and he was like, I have to come all the way back. And I was like, it's five fucking minutes. (laughs) He's like, I have two kids with me. And I was like, I know that, but still. 
So he couldn't get back in time. So I ended up just doing. I felt really bad. I ended up just doing the one packet with the with the woman that I was assigned to. But it was also kind of funny because you know who else would lock their keys in their car or or be stuck without <laughs> keys to a car than me? So. You know, I and but but it was nice because I talked to her and she was really she was really nice. Uh, so we ended up being um, being assigned to a neighborhood that was predominantly African American. It was it was really interesting. Um, so so some people were only talk to us. We were there at noon on Sunday, so I would say half of the people were actually at church. Um, and it was funny. This one guy was outside like doing yard work or something, and he was like. Oh, this is my mama's house, but she's she's at church right now, but I'll take your information. So he talked to us for a little bit. Um, and he was like, so every time we went to another house, he'd be like, oh, that person's at church. Oh, they're at work. Oh, they're sleeping. <laughs> oh, they're probably home. Oh, they're sleeping, but they you probably could wake them up or, you know, it was just <laughs> really funny. It was really funny. And this went down like down the block as far as like he could see and shout at us. It was so funny. So. We were like, do you want to just walk with us? Like, <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. He was really cool. But I would say that the most eye-opening thing is, and I knew this was true, but it was it was sort of sobering to see it, that Twitter isn't real life. And the majority of people out there that I talk to were leaned more towards Biden or were more um, not as engaged, where they uh, there was a lot more undecided voters than Twitter would have you, <laughs> I would say. Mm -hmm. So I would say that probably 60% of the homes that we knocked on, people weren't home. And according to their neighbor, they were at, mainly at church. <laughs> um <laughs> And then of the 40% of the people that we actually did get to talk to, there were a decent amount of like Biden voters there. And uh, there were a couple of people and there were women who said that they were going to vote for Warren. Um, but it was it was very it was very interesting because you you kind of sometimes forget when you're on the Internet all the time that the Internet is actually not real life. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes I think when my takeaway from this was – when we question on Twitter or whatever why a certain candidate does something, they must – I mean, we had an app that we had to record everything into after we visited each house. Like, was the person whose name was attached to the property records or, or was registered there? So we were only supposed to knock on the doors of registered Democrats mm. um, and find out if they had done early voting yet. And if they hadn't, ask if we could talk to them about Elizabeth Warren or if – they, or if they had or hadn't asked them if they would mind sharing their vote. So that was a way that, like, when they talk about, I guess, exit polling, so to speak, like, it's interesting the way that uh, – because if, if, if we were doing it, then clearly everyone is doing it because there's an app that you downloaded from, like, the, you know, mm -hmm. app store. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes the one takeaway, like, sometimes when the Twitter pundits are screaming, like, why is somebody doing such and such – they have data that is more on the ground and more, I guess, real life than what Twitter reflects. And that was my biggest takeaway of the whole experience um, was just you think you know, but you kind of you kind of don't. Um, so, yeah, but I felt really good having done it. They asked if we could. Uh, they asked all of us if we can come back next week at uh, this upcoming weekend. Um, I genuinely I don't know if I can, so I said you know I would contact the campaign on like Thursday or Friday and let them know. Um, I have to see, but it was really good. I'm really glad I did it. I would totally do it again. Um, it was not nearly as scary as I thought it was going to be, and I think I surprised the chick that I was with because by like house number ten, I was kind of like hello, like I was kind of doing like the, the spiel. <laughs> 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 but yeah no it was good it was really good and i if, if you support any of the candidates out there in general in the future whether it's this election or an, another election it's a really eye-opening and like fulfilling experience um just and it's yeah it's just i i totally recommend it like you'll feel you'll feel better at the end even if you reach just one person out of the 50 people like it's it feels good um 
the last woman I talked to was funny. She had seen the debates and they weren't on our list of homes, which means uh, either uh, she didn't live there, she wasn't registered, or uh, they're not registered Democrats or whatever. But like it was a really – she was really funny um, – in, she, was, she was clearly very well informed, but she was just really funny in some of the things that she said. Her stepdad came out and, you know, he was like, you're not voting. You're not knocking on doors for Trump, are you? And she, she was just like, does she look like she's like knocking on doors for Trump? It was, it was just so funny. Was, we like, we just, like we had, I talked to them for like 15 minutes. It was, they were really fun. Like a lot of the people were just really nice and it was a gorgeous day. It was 60 degrees outside and people were sitting outside and yeah, it was really good. So again, nice. I totally recommend it in the future. We, I will say, yeah. so like at the, at my birthday party, like we were inside and then like the door was just open and there's like this, outdoor area like sort of around the corner uh where some other people were like where the barbecue was and so it was just sort of like indoor outdoor and there's just, there were some people who came uh and like knocked on the door and i thought at first i thought they were like random people coming to join the party because like frank had invited when he was barbecuing like he it, you can kind of see into the neighbor's window and some random neighbors were there he was like oh you guys should come over so they had come over and i assume this person was another rando and so everyone's like hey what's up like come in and then she's like S- had her little thing for bernie and then we're like oh no no <laughs> like, like i thought you were here to party but no, <laughs> we <should have> been. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can keep your bernie thing we have a candidate already <laughs> we know who we'll be voting for it was actually really funny because like just earlier we had had this huge discussion where like a lot of the people that were there don't necessarily always hang out with each other. It's like, I know them, but some of them I know separately. And so, you know, you tread lightly on certain subjects, but like we had come to the realization that we were all like super pro Warren, um, which makes sense. Birds of a feather and all. But so we had all been like, you know, yay Warren. And then, and then of course the person came. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's so funny. Nope. <laughs> uh, have you guys early voted yet? So I have my ballot and I've had it for a while, actually. And I, I'm always so bad about actually sending it back. Um, I think I've said before, like, what usually ha- happens is I end up filling it out day of the elections and then just, like, hand dropping it off at my polling place. You have to but do yes, it. I learned how important it is to do it ahead of time. Oh, I don't think right. we can early vote. You can early vote in. In, in New York? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, it's from a, it's a new yesterday, thing just started. Well, they have not been doing a very good I- job of publicizing that. I wonder Last why. I heard there was no early voting in New York. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. we just we always get absentee ballots, and um, so Frank got his in the mail also. And yesterday, he like sat down for a couple of hours, and like, what, so he knew like who he's going to vote for in the primaries. Warren, obviously. <laughs> hey, um, which is a conclusion that we came to separately. I will say, um. But he, like, had sat down with – because, you know, you're not just voting for the presidential candidate. But um, so he was, like, sitting down, like, reading through all of the stuff that they had, you know, sent us about, like, all the different propositions and stuff. Um, It's just like, man, he just, like, takes this much more seriously than probably your average person and just makes my heart happy. Yeah. the second time voting. (laughs) Yep. Okay. I'm sorry, Amanda. Early voting – for the presidential primary uh, okay. is April 28th. It starts. Okay. April, it's so the, I didn't so miss it. So your primary is April 28th, it looks like. Early okay. voting is April 18th to the 26th. So I okay, was good. wrong. Okay. I just knew that so I, was like, I, knew I would like to consider myself fairly well informed. And like that was like not even on my radars. Okay. So that's good to know. Yeah. That's according to elections.newyork.gov. I'm glad I didn't miss it. Whew. This is going to be my first primary that I'm voting in because up until recently, I have been an independent. Oh, and that's right. You uh, can't do that in New York. And you can't. You can yeah. Have... Which is why I am no longer an independent because I'm like, well, uh, F this shit. Um, this sucks. I want to have a say. So. Yeah. And I've also been voting basically blue the entire time I've been of voting age so it just felt a little ridiculous to still <laughs> just, consider myself in, an independent but so. it's just in the primaries it doesn't mean that if for some reason there's a random red candidate that is your like in local right. election that right and well, I think that was sort of the re- the rationale I had as to why I was staying independent that like oh you know I don't know like 
someday. Like I just, you know, I don't live with party lines. Like I like vote my conscience yeah. and it's yeah. like, well, my conscience is pretty damn blue. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm still an independent voter because in North Carolina, you can pick whatever ballot you want. That's pretty cool. For the primaries. Well, you know what? I like that for independence. But then you hear like in like places like South Carolina or wherever, Mm. like with open primaries, you can easily have a party that says, you know, stuff the ballots, basically go vote for somebody else in the primaries, like the candidate that you want your actual candidate to go up against and defeat, which, um, I mean, I don't know if that's a real problem or not, but, you know, just a a thing that could happen. Right. (laughs) Never be too careful. Yeah. So does anybody have anything else from their week or um, anything like that? I went to see Beetlejuice with with, uh, JP and Ro. Yeah, that's right. It was super fun. Oh, and Daniel was there too, but like, whatever. Huh. Forget him. Uh, yeah, it was it was really fun. It was uh, jam packed. It was like a standing room only. Wow. It's been a long time since I've been to a Broadway musical on a weeknight where there was standing room in the back. But yeah, it was it was really fun. Nice. Uh, awesome. Broad little Broadway drama that was the last produ- uh, performance for the actress that plays uh, Lydia. So that was kind of oh, cool. That's in always fun. Yeah, when you do that. Yeah, apparently uh, some something went down, and uh, the press is saying she left, un- like to pursue television opportunities. But our uh, JP, his uh, contacts on the inside says maybe maybe it's something uh, a little more nefarious or oh. a little more uh, drama uh, inspired as to why she left. But, but either way, it was kind of cool that we happened to be there on the last night. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that yeah. is awesome. I was yeah, inadvertently was there for Idina Menzel's second to last night in Wicked. Ooh, because... that must have been pretty damn cool. Well, no, because she fell through the trap door on the stage the next night and it forced her to end her run. Wow. Well, she at least a... you weren't there the night that you <laughs> fell through the trap door, poor thing. No. She was supposed to. It was like within her last week that we saw it. Like she she knew that she was planning to leave, but she had a kind of like an Adele situation with a, you know, unexpected early retirement. Right. <laughs> Cuz I also saw Adele's last performance when in That's London. True. Uh, yeah. Right. A couple years ago. A couple years ago, and that wasn't supposed to be her last performance either. <laughs> yeah. Maybe your bad luck. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure that's not the case at all. You bring sunshine I mean, and joy wherever you go. I don't know about that, as evidenced by last week's episode, in which I re-listened and was like, "Wow, Colleen, you seriously need to get the self-care in check because you sound crazy." Oh no, we had some very interesting conversations last week. I just listened to the episode today. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. Did you notice that our 30-minute conversation was cut down to like 13 minutes? You're welcome. It took me. 20 a full day to do that. <laughs> yeah, that was actually pretty good. There's a few yeah. places that like I knew where the edits were, but a, a lot of them I did not. So good on you. Thanks. Cheers. I saved yeah. all of them for a bonus show potentially, except one. One of them I actually accidentally deleted and hit save before I, I – whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I had enough <laughs> of them saved. I think I be- – I believe I it was one of those shows where I, I genuinely believe that I have at least like – 15 minutes of bonus content and <laughs> I'll have to go through. Nice. A lot. Save that for a rainy day. Mm. Save or some of that for day. a month that we're light on bonus content. Yeah, <laughs> or I would say snowy day, but I had a snowy day and I didn't put yeah. up We're, we're getting out of snowy day season. <laughs> oh, and I, yeah. yeah. I'm Anyways. like excited for spring, but I'm also like, we got zero snow up here. I never got to use my snow boots, which are now going to be two seasons old oh, and warm right. once. So yeah. I'm a little like, a little bummed about it. I'm sorry. Um, all right. So since it's a little bit later than usual tonight, because we started later because of the debates, um, I was going – I had some stuff for a middle section, but we can, again, skip that for this week. Sorry, everybody. Um, but what, This Reddit what thread's things, becoming our new health benefits of alcohol. Yes. Seriously. <laughs> well, no, actually, I didn't – it wasn't the Reddit thread. It was – I had pulled up a recently updated Politico 
like page that had the different so next Tuesday is Super Tuesday so our episode comes out right before Super Tuesday so I was going to go through some of the candidates I was going to make I was making a quiz of which candidate was behind which positions just to to help our viewers out but you know what I'm just going to have to put this link in the show notes and I don't know. It's pretty good, actually. It's a really good... So, essentially, it breaks down the different issues. It has, like, a, a list of, of different issues. And then subcategories within those issues. So, like, for instance... Let's see, let's see, let's see. Criminal justice. We have capital punishment is one. Uh, cash bail reform is another. Cocaine sentencing disparities is another one. Mandatory minimum sentence reform is another one. And private prisons is another one. And you can click on each of those subcategories and it will explain to you what the issue is. Like a, hmm. a brief like little write-up of what the issue is. And then it will give you each candidate's face and you can click on their face to know what view they have of said issue. And the issues on this site is criminal justice reform, cybersecurity, ec- uh, economy, education, elections. Oh, hold on, I've got a big ad that I've got to scroll through. Uh, spoiler alert, there we go. Um, energy, the environment, and climate change, food and agriculture, gun control, health care, immigration. Wow, unlike the Democratic debates, health care was pretty low down, thankfully. Because um, <laughs> I don't know, but we spent 10 of. 11 debates talking about fucking health care. Uh, immigration, infrastructure, marijuana and cannabis, legalization, military taxes, technology tr- and trade. So if you want to know, and there's a lot of subcategories within each one of these. Um, so if you want to know where any of the candidates stand on any of these issues, um, the candidates still left in the race are Joe Biden, at least the ones that are still... Oh, you know what? They actually do have the views from people that have dropped out because I'm hovering over Marianne Williamson's face and now uh, Kamala's face. And all right. So you can see where people did stand, but I believe the main... Well, Harry- they still stand there. They're still alive. They just aren't in the race. Right. You can see their positions. So, um, but yeah, so click on um, if you want to. I will put this in the show notes. And for anybody that doesn't know what the show notes are, it's if you read the episode description, you can like swipe up or whatever or or, or swipe right, depending on what app you use, um, and uh, see each candidate's issues. And I think it is really important because we are down. I mean, we you all know who we're voting for, obviously, but... You, it's your democratic right. We're still a democracy. We're not. We're not quite over. We're not quite. You know, beyond that yet. Um, so I think it's important, though, that everybody does their fair share of research. Um, so I'll put this in the show notes. If for some reason you can't, you don't know how to get to the show notes to link to it. I know. Send me a tweet, comment in the Facebook group, any of the Facebook groups, um, Instagram, wherever. Let me know, and we will get the link out to you because it is pretty comprehensive. Okay. On that note, I think it is probably time to take a quick commercial break and move into some feedback. Great. All right. So to start us off, Matt has some suggestions about, uh, per our discussion last week, some shows with better representation um, and non-white people leads. Uh, the first one that he has is Pose, um, which is on FX. Uh, season one is currently on Netflix, and he cre- includes an interview that the create uh, with the creator who went through a lot of hurdles to get the show on air. I will include that link in the show note as well. Again, just let me know anything that I ever say is on the show notes that you want to know. Send us an email or a Twitter or a Twitter or a tweet or something and we'll get the information out to you. Um, Everything is always, you know, very easily close on hand for us. Uh, He also continues with Undone on Amazon. Um, This is about a woman who discovers she has unusual powers after surviving a car accident. Uh, why aren't I watching this show? This is totally yeah. Up my mm, that looks promising. Um, oh, because it's on Amazon. That's why I'm not watching it. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I have Amazon. Not I not. just. Uh, I'm. Oh, I'm almost done with Sex Education. Ooh, nice. Yeah, we're uh, at that halfway point of season two. It's a good show. It's a great uh, show. <laughs> Spoiler alert! It's great. Matt also says uh, Tuka and Birdie on Netflix. Uh, maybe a cheat. 
since the characters aren't human, but they are voiced by people of color, Ali Wong, Tiffany Haddish, and Stephen Young. Okay. Y- mm-hmm. Yoon. Yoon. Well, Matt's here, so you can explain the last name to me. Yoon. <laughs> uh, anyway, the title pair are best friends, Tuka being the wild one, and Birdie being the neurotic one. And then finally, One Day at a Time, seasons one through three are on Netflix. Season four is coming soon to pop. There's a oh, reboot. Great. Yeah, this is a reboot of the classic series focusing on a multi-generation Latinx family as they deal with a variety of issues. It includes a great LGBTQ storyline involving one of the teens. Also, Elena is basically Shandy. Well, now I have to watch it. And also Rita Moreno. She's in that too? Yeah, she is. She plays the grandma. Oh. Yeah, that's like a Broadway royalty there. The only uh, Latinx person in the original West Side Story, Rita, yeah. Miss Rita Marina. And I was embarrassed I forgot to bring up Pose during our conversation last week. I did watch the first season on Netflix. It is really, really good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Billy I Porter am- is everything. I, that's what I've I've gathered from seeing him at award shows. Yeah. I'm going to get to Pose, but uh, honestly, Undone sounds like so up my alley that I am absolutely going to get on that. Yay. Uh, moving on. John says, in San Francisco, they don't poop in their hands. They poop on the sidewalks between cars and, yes, right in the middle of traffic. Oh, and I forgot. Poop on the seat of a scoot, uh, scoot rental scooter. Oh, no. Yeah, it feels like he has some experience. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and they jack off at the same places. Such a great city. And then regarding our discussion about Sabrina, the chilling adventures of Sabrina last week, Greg says, I'm a couple episodes into season three. Overall, I'm really liking their show, and I like it when it takes the big leaps into the absurd which it certainly does. Uh, overall, <laughs> it has worked and keeps, thing inter- keeps things interesting. But I got to say, though I can't say exactly why, the musical performances by the Fright Club band and the cheerleading squad are awful. Like, I don't understand how that was approved. It sounds so bad. It's mind-boggling to me. Is that just me being 33? It must, I, I don't know. Jay didn't like it either, but I fucking loved it. I didn't either. <laughs> I loved it. I didn't I either. I, it's, it's, it kind of took me. I didn't mind the band. I thought that just like made sense, but I thought like the cheerleading stuff. It, I like, loved just, it, but the cheerleading stuff is so necessary. Yeah, I guess. But it's it like pays off at the end, or, or in it's that, hilarious in how they said. I mean, are we talking about? Or have we all finished? I haven't mm. finished, but okay. I, I will say no, I will I'm not. very close to the end, and it has it has gotten better. I. I take back my comment about being kind of meh. It does cool. improve, but it's also also infuriating because the whole scenario of that leads up into the last episode doesn't have to freaking happen because you're screaming at Sabrina like... Yeah. Sabrina kind of sucks. But everybody else... Sabrina is does suck, right? She does kind of <laughs> suck. But everybody else is great. <laughs> I must say, I do not have that many problems with her. I think I think that she's a teenager trying to do the right thing. Right, which is why I think I find it, her character so infuriating. Because I think it's easy to kind of see, right, see yourself like, yeah. as a teenager. And, like, she's just so much an actual, real teenager. And it's kind of infuriating. I know. Hold on, Jandy. I hope you can hear this. And I hope that this isn't wrong. But this is what I have to say about that. Hold on. Oh, good for you. Oh, good for you. <laughs> oh, it's not stopping. Oh, there it goes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. I keep going. I don't get it, but it was funny. Have you never heard the Christian Bale rant? Mm-mm. Sorry. I, I think either my cat just farted or like a neighbor <laughs> farted. <laughs> Maybe your butt's just leaking. That happened to me recently where I was like, who smells? Who smells? Like a loud, long fart sound. Oh. It wasn't me. And it was from behind and it was very scary. (laughs) I'm sorry. sorry. I think it's the cat. Okay. I'm sorry. Anyway, continue. Nothing. I was just going to talk about the 
I can't believe you've never seen that. You so you you've heard the the Christian Bale Ren from Terminator. Oh, I remember it. I don't think you. I ever actually listened to it, but I do remember oh that God. moment in pop culture. So it's not so much about the rant; it's more about the remix of the rant, <laughs> which is the uh, auto tune tuned version. Uh, have you really never heard it? I don't think so. Or if I have, it's been so long. I I don't remember enough oh of it. Uh, oh my god, this is my favorite thing in the whole world, and it's so much my favorite thing that I listen to it a lot. And Jay and I will still sometimes sing it. Um, okay, so I will play this at the end of the show as a payoff for everybody, mainly because I have to find it. And I don't think that we have the time to sit here and find it now. But I swear to God, at the very end of the show, when I say, does anybody else have anything? I will play it there. And it is amazing. Okay. Uh, Also, JP says, weird, I just cut one. So apparently you heard JP's fart all the way. Oh, wow. That's that's, uh, that's got some power behind it. Yeah. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) He also says that he's been advised that he can respond on Rose's behalf. Look, I'm going to need a statement of consent before I even Yeah, I don't think I can just take your word for it. Possibility. I'm just saying. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, uh, read the Never Have I Ever game. This is funny. So Mandy says, I only haven't done two. Uh, Brian says his number is three. Dennis said ten. Uh, Greg said six. Maggie said nine. JP said seven. Uh, Joanne said nine, eight, unless you count a daytime Alaska cruise as a cruise. I'm amazed at people who have less than five. There are at least six of these that no normal person should have ever experienced. <laughs> uh, just kidding. If, uh, if we did one with all of us, I assume that all 20 are covered. A fun list. Uh, so didn't somebody else also say that... Was it Boston? Somebody else or somebody also said that they only had two in the group. It was a very late entry. But I also got a text from my friend Carmen who said that uh, she also got an only a two and hers were she's never been on a cruise or skydiving. So, mm. yeah, good times. Good times. OK, look. OK, here's the, here's the deal, guys. Listen, I just watched the debate, so I feel like I need to say things like, so here's the thing or look. Look, I have a plan. Uh, look, I have a plan. Okay, it's not. It's not going to be my 2020 resolution. It will be my 2021 resolution. And if it's not my 2021 resolution, I will do it for my 2021 Lent. Okay. okay. <laughs> Just make sure you work in a joke about the naked cowboy, though. That's that's really oh important. Oh my god! <laughs> I know, right? He only had one good joke. So we're referring to Mike Bloomberg in the debates, or he tried to make some jokes, and they just the delivery was just all sorts of bad. There was only one that actually made me laugh, and it was the horrible, horrible, like you know, Miss America contest question at the end, where they were like, "And what's one thing that is a common misconception about you? And what's your motto?" It's like you know. April 23rd, because it's not too hot and it's not too cold. Um, <laughs> but he did actually, I'll give him this. He had a funny where he was like, my common misconception is that I'm six feet tall, which is funny because Donald Trump calls him Mini Mike because he's short. <laughs> I thought it was Little Mike. No, he calls him Mini Mike. Mini Mike. Yeah, I suppose yeah. that's better yeah. alliteration and all. <laughs> so that was actually kind of funny. I was like, all right, I'll give you that. You're one for three. <laughs> <laughs> You're one for th- – we don't even know because some of yeah. those jokes were not uh, yeah, recognized by jokes, any other human in the world as being a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we thought Trump was bad at delivering jokes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's – you know what? <laughs> if – Bloomberg gets the nomination. They should just have a uh, joke delivery off. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's how we elect our next president, who can actually tell and receive a joke. Yeah, that's. that's and where I we're think at. you have to, you have to have like empathy to be funny. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I, I don't know about that. Louis C.K. was Louis C.K. was kind of funny before he wasn't. Mm, I guess it depends. Yeah. Mm. Uh, anyway, sorry to kill. <laughs> Let's get into some. That's what she said, and then we'll finish up with the facey. Ba- uh, the, I'm sorry. Then we'll finish up with the emails and voicemails, and then we will uh, get out of here. All right. All right. We do it live. 
with this effing thing. Yes. No, 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 no. I need a more Bill O'Reilly delivery from you there. I forgot how he delivered it. Just angry. Really we'll do it live. We do it live. <laughs> Loud and angry. We yeah. do it live with this effing thing. Nice. <laughs> did we not just do that? We did that part already. We totally did it. You missed it. We're doing it live. My arm's a little bit sore. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to wash it before we started recording. Put some more lotion on it. I love just- it. It's it's so nice. <laughs> she already had a couple with her bridesmaids and then was like, oh, we can continue this. <laughs> Finally did it. He did really great work. I loved it. (laughs) He was super nice. (laughs) Especially towards the end, you won't be able to stop. Oh, God, that's a perfect one, actually. (laughs) (laughs) If it's not eight, it's nine. (laughs) You're on your way to a very fun journey. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know about him, but I was done. (laughs) (laughs) not that much is happening here may is coming really fast (laughs) oh may lucky may yeah lucky may he knows how to take care of business there the path is there i just gotta go down (laughs) (laughs) give me 60 seconds and i'm gonna get there or maybe we should stop and take a pee break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I'm next. Yeah, you're. Uh, we've been there. We've done that. We're a little bit further in than I thought we were going to be at this point. <laughs> Matt, that one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I cracked that sucker open. Which I just did with the LaCroix that I loudly opened. Sorry. Nice. Nice. That's perfect. Prop. I like it. I had a prop. I just used it too early. (laughs) Oh, that's going to be one next week. (laughs) It keeps going the whole series. Doesn't matter. Still counts. Ours are very similar, except you've been on a cruise. (laughs) Okay, I don't get that one. How is that one uh, dirty? I don't know. Okay. How many can you combine there? I had to go with one of these instructors. I'm working on the other half. (laughs) Just put it in. (laughs) I promise you'll feel really good about it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, sorry. (laughs) I was so delighted by that last read. Uh, Oh, I'm just so impressed you did that without notes. That's the only way you can get into a slightly more comfortable position. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to the uh, voicemail portion of the show. We're going to start with a voicemail from JP. I'm pretty sure that's the only reason that he's still here and still awake right now. All right. Here you go. Hey, it's JP. I just wanted to call in and try to be a part of the uh, the Shandy birthday show. So I... I had a few things to say, and I wrote everything down. I kind of scribbled it while I was driving, so um, just to make sure I get everything right, okay? And this is all kind of like some wit and wisdom that I wrote down just for Shandy. Okay, here we go. So, Shandy, fornication. I'm sorry. uh, For an occasion such as (laughs) I, uh, I just thought I would put together some facts. And I wanted to share them with you. Okay, so, as you may already know, statistics show those who have the most birthdays live the longest. (laughs) But having too many birthdays may kill you. Cheers. Okay. Now, I don't know if you've ever had a surprise birthday party, Shandy. I have. And it was one of the like one of those surprise birthdays where you really did not know anything about it until you walked in. True story. But just keep this in mind. All the people who planned it and told you, you know, they were busy next Saturday or whatever, just remember, those were the people who were the very best at lying to your face. <laughs> That's <Once true>. for laughter. 
Okay, so I know with a birthday, I know many women like the always pose worry for about how gravity can cause, you know, things on the body to sag as they get older. But keep in mind, if it weren't for gravity, you'd be chasing your birthday cake all over the room. <laughs> <Pause for laughter. laughs> or birthday cakes. Okay, last one. Oh, well, so they say that regular cakes. naps help prevent old age, especially when you take them while driving. Oh, God. Pause oh, Jesus. That went, that went into a dark right. place. So anyway, Shandy, I want you to celebrate your birthday this year like a pickle and relish the moment. <laughs> Happy birthday, JP. Oh, thank you, JP. Nice, nice. That was good. JP also sent me a birthday card. Thank you, JP. Oh, that's so sweet. Very nice. Yes, as did uh, Matt, by the way. Um, So thank you also, Matt. That's what she said. (laughs) 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 And Kayla, Kayla contributed to my tattoo fund. So anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. All right. Very so cool. we have next up, we have a voicemail from Desiree. Um, it's a little bit long. So everybody hunker down and buckle in. And I am really excited to hear this. So here we go. Hey, Amanda, Shandy and Colleen. This is Des. Uh, no Astrid today. Um, she's in her room. <laughs> Anyways, I uh, finally caught up with the show. Yay. It's just crazy because l- literally just had a break not even two months ago. Um, <laughs> but I still got behind. Um, I was calling t- to talk about some dating stories. Um, everybody knows I'm elderly with my, you know, elderly pregnancy and all that fun stuff, having a baby in my 40s. Um, <laughs> so when I was dating back in the day, uh, things were a lot different. Like we didn't have the internet. A lot of people did not have the internet um, when I was in my early 20s. Um, so what <laughs> what we had was um, classified ads in the newspaper. <laughs> it's like Craigslist now, only it was in the actual paper. <laughs> and you had very limited mm-hmm. space on how much you could put. And uh, so I had one of those, and, and it, you know, you called into the paper, and it had like a, a code for the person you wanted to call, and they, you could call and leave a message, and then they could call, you know, get their messages, and then they can call you if they wanted to, and everything. So um, <laughs> when I was in my early twenties, uh, I did that, and this one guy, um, he left a message, and he was a reporter for the newspaper. He covered like entertainment stuff, you know. And so I was like, okay, well, he sounds kind of cool. So, um, you know, I, I, we talked and we said we'd go on a date. Um, and so <laughs> I met him at this um, nightclub, right, that uh, was having a concert. It was a concert for um, Delight, <laughs> you know, Groove is in the Heart. Um, so he had to interview the band and everything. So um, he was like, you know, if you want to meet me up there, we'll enjoy the concert and everything. And then afterwards, um, you know after he would stay and interview the band and everything. So I was like, sure, why not? So, you know, I get up there and meet him and everything. And so he had to go talk to the manager. And so we got to go on their um, tour bus. So that was kind of cool. They weren't up there, of course. They were getting ready for the show. But uh, then we got to see the show, and that was cool. Um, I, didn't, I don't think I went on a date with him. I wasn't really attracted to him. Uh, he was a nice guy, but that was an interesting date I went on, though. Um, and then a couple years later, um, in my 20s still, I was working as a travel agent. And um, this one guy came in, and he was hot and uh, he was booking a trip for himself to go to India. He was going to meet up with some friends and they were going to, you know, party in India. Um, so, which, you know, that was a thing. You know, there were a lot of raves going on and everything. But um, so uh, when he came back from his trip, I sent him a thank you card. Like we used to send thank you cards to people who you know, book trips and everything, and, you know, thank you for booking with us, hope you had a good trip, whatever, so I sent him a card, and it's like, 
you know, thanks for booking with us. I hope you had a good trip. Would love to discuss it with you sometime, maybe over dinner. And um, he called, and uh, <laughs> we went to dinner. I did this a few times with hot guys who <laughs> would travel with us, so I got to go on a few dates. But this guy was such a weirdo. Like, he was an ex-Marine, right? Uh, um, but <laughs> uh, he thought he was, he, he said he was a shaman, right? So <laughs> he was really into self-medicating um he did <laughs> shrooms he i guess was doing shrooms we we went out to dinner then we went back to his place and he was like on shrooms or whatever and yeah, yeah. i thought i was gonna get some but he just wanted a handy it was weird very weird so i was like okay whatever <laughs> so i never went out with that guy again <laughs> but um yeah <laughs> i've had some interesting dates um, oh, there was this whole little thing with a police cadet, but we had never actually went on a date, but there was a lot of flirting. Um, <laughs> the best date I ever went on actually was with my husband. Um, the first date we ever had and things were really going like, oh, this is not going to work out. This is not going to work out. And then, uh, you know, he had to change the day and this and that, and it's another thing. And so finally we went out and um and then we were going to a restaurant and it was packed and so i'm like oh i do not feel like standing in line for an hour right so let's go somewhere else so we went somewhere else um a place that um you know i like to go anyway and uh it was outside you know by the water and so uh we talked for like hours and it was the first time in my life i was on a date with a person and I was like really able to just be me, you know? I felt comfortable yeah. enough to just be me. I didn't have to put on any shit and I didn't feel like putting on any shit, you know? I was already 40 years old and I got I was tired of the whole dating bullshit. So, you know, it was great. It was a really good night. So, um, the rest is history, of course. I mean, he moved in within a month, <laughs> which is insane, <laughs> wow. I know. But uh, six years later and um, uh, we still love each other, so that's great. It just worked out, you know, doesn't always happen because, yeah, he's not my first husband, but he is my best husband. Um, Aww, I love <laughs> anyways, um, I also want to say, um, Colleen, talk about voting and everything. Everybody needs to get out there and vote. Um, if you don't vote, what you're saying is that you're okay with how this country is being run right now, basically, because you're not working to make any change. So if you don't vote, you're just part of the problem. Um, everybody has a right to vote. Well, <laughs> most people have a right to vote. Um, and, you know, most people have a right to vote. You should take that right. You should use it. It's a responsibility as well as a right. It's a responsibility. You have say in how this country is run. And if you don't vote, like my dad, my dad hasn't voted in, oh my God, I don't even know if, since I was a teenager, maybe. Um, he actually registered to vote after Trump got elected. He, wow. cause he, hates the man um so so he registered to vote and you know you've got to take that right that responsibility and you've got to tell the country this is not acceptable it's not acceptable for us to have someone who normalizes racism and who normalizes sexism and who basically gets away with crime constantly um it's it's just not acceptable and you know it doesn't matter who you vote for vote for with your conscience vote with your heart shit if you are a republican and you don't want to vote for any of these democrats that's fine too you know what there are other republicans running for president you may not have heard of them because you know um yeah who are they who knows they're not rich and they're not you know being backed because you know the republicans are saying you know another four years for trump but educate yourself about these um candidates maybe there's one they're you know they're going to be on the primary the primary is where you need to vote with your heart you vote for the person you would like to be president and then at the general election, vote with your head. Vote for the candidate who is going to be a better 
president over the choices that are there. If your candidate does not make it to the general election, that sucks. It really does. But you know what? People who voted decided they didn't want that candidate. You cannot do anything about that. If you don't vote because your candidate didn't make it to the, the fucking general election, then you're an asshole who thinks that Trump should still stay in office and that that is preferable to one of these under, other candidates, which is bullshit. I've heard that argument before. Oh, the Democrats are just as bad as Trump. No, they're not, okay? They're not as racist. They're not as sexist. They, you know, they're at least trying to make a little bit of change. Yeah, sure, they're not all perfect, and some of them suck more than others, but they're not as bad as Trump. They aren't. He normalizes racism. He normalizes sexism. He gets people to think that that's okay because we put him in power, and he's an example to everyone, and that's not okay. It's 20 fucking 20. It's not okay. So don't not vote. Because your butt hurt because your candidate didn't get elected in the primary. Please, please don't do that. Because if you do that, you're as much of an asshole as, you know, Trump. <laughs> okay? And educate yourself. Educate yourself on who's running. Vote in your local elections. These, these are important. Local elections, you think, oh, who cares? They're very important because these are the people who are going to... Um, they're going to affect the bigger uh, players, you know, uh, your your local uh, representatives, your local um, senators. They affect what's going on in um, Congress and at the state level, also at the federal level. So they're just as important to vote for. So make sure you look into them and see and make sure it's somebody who aligns with your values, somebody who would be the best candidate. There are many ways you can do this. There are websites that have great voter guides that are nonpartisan. They're not there to tell you who to vote for. They'll just say, here is the information. Make your own decision. You can go to uh, Ballotpedia. Uh, ballot ready. Either one of those two are excellent, excellent sources of information. Um, if you have uh, ballot measures that are going to be on your ballot and you want to find out what it's all about, look them up. We had a ballot measure a few years ago that was written in such a way that a yes vote was actually a no vote and mm -hmm. it was extremely confusing it was one of those ones we had to look up and find out and they explained to you in plain language like if you vote yes this is what it means if you vote no this is what it means and um we are able to vote in an informed way and you know it's just nice to be able to do that information is power knowledge is power use that power and vote okay vote very important very important so anyways i'm going to get back off my soapbox here <laughs> and um say that i love you guys love the show talk to you later bye i just want to remind everybody that desiree is from florida <laughs> so when she talks about you know sketchy things on the ballot she is talking from Florida perspective. <laughs> mm -hmm. Honestly, though, sometimes even like even here, like the propositions and stuff, it's like you read them and you're like, wait, so am, is this? Yeah. And that's am I vote? Am, everything should be written in plain English. And it's really annoying that it's not. And you have to like really do, you know, I, due honestly, diligence to I think, figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I also, I feel like that there should have been like a special dedication to Bernie bros in that. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that's who part of that message was, was aimed at <laughs> for the um, bros in the back. You know, the bros in the back. If your guy doesn't make it like still go vote. Yeah. Don't stay home. Right. Your journey doesn't uh, end there. I will say as of our recording, um, Ann Coulter, the great Ann Coulter, <laughs> <laughs> has tweeted that uh, as of tonight's debate, Senator Warren has convinced me that Bernie isn't that worrisome. He'll never get anything done. She's the freak who will show up with 17 uh, plans every day and keep everyone up until they'll get until it gets done. 
To which I'm like, Amen. And? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that's, that's, kind, of, that's like yes. the kind of person that we need. Right? Now, right. she also, she did to fair qualif- qualify, them, qualify them as 17 idiotic plans, but oh. um, I feel like because Ann Coulter is a fucking moron and a half, she's an idiot, it kind of cancels it out. So, oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, I did want to mention on a non um, political note, one yes, of the, I'm sorry, going back I'm to sorry, one of the comments. Yeah. Uh, or one of one of the stories from uh, Des's voicemail when she was talking about how the guy just wanted a handy. That's like probably one of my favorite words. I think it's so funny and so silly, and it's just even greater when you know that that is the word in German for cell phone. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. They call it a handy. Oh my god, you've just made my whole night. <laughs> Which is also interesting when they call the the cases a condom or whatever the fuck they call it. <laughs> I know we talk about this all the time, but I cannot remember right now. <laughs> In French, they call a, a phone case a cock. That's it. Okay. That's yeah. it. <laughs> I was like, I yeah. know the case has, an, has something. <laughs> something phallic. Oh, like. But in Nothing German, it's quick. a handy. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's amazing. It's like, oh, they borrowed a word. You know, there's a lot of borrowing back and forth. They borrowed a word, but they borrowed it wrong. They, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that sounds good. <laughs> go with that. So you put it in your hand. Yeah. Which oh one am God. I talking about? <laughs> Well, well, thank you, Desiree, for it's a your trick thoughts. question. All of them. <laughs> thank you for your thoughts, Desiree. We really appreciate it. And as she said, like, she's right. Like, get out and vote for the person that you want. And it's, it's you know, at the end of the day, it is personal. As, you know, it is personal because what happens politically can have an effect on uh, if not your everyday life, the everyday life of people that you care about or your fel- fellow Americans. But yeah, she's right. Like, get out and vote. And again, check the show notes or f- yeah, tell us if you need to get it. And I will give you, I will send the link for the article that has where everybody stands on different things. So, but yeah, at the end of the day, I guess, remember who the actual enemy is. Okay. Yes. Uh, we're going to finish up. I don't think that we have an Andy email this we week. We do not. Oh. Okay. So we're going to finish up with two different e- – we have two emails from Joanne. So we are going to finish up with those. And then if we have time, I will play my favorite internet remix of all time. Got it. But until we get there, let's hear what Joanne has to say. Um Yes. So uh, Joanne's first email is entitled TERFs, and it says, Not sure if I should address address this to the real weird broads or the broad sisters. Smiling face emoji. Just listening to the second part of the crossover episode, and I listened with confidence in you all, but still a little trepidation as you entered into the J.K. Rowling shocker of a tweet. The trepidation matched your own thoughts as you tried to unravel a sensitive discussion to which you all have varying degrees of direct experience. Well, throw mine and yours, all five of your privileged white cis female trepidation away. Uh, From my point of view, you have an extremely well-meaning discussion that touched on both the wrongness of the things that were tweeted and even more so, in my view, the unwillingness of Miss Rowling to accept a discussion or issue some more or issue some more thoughtful introspection and the difficulty of sorting through the consequences. You did a wonderful job. Thank you for that. I think in any of these types of situations, there is no single right consequence. It is going to depend on so many factors that are personal for each individual and rightly so. As a, as a side example, on your brother podcast, uh, The Ramblecast After Dark, uh, Jack mentioned several times going to Hobby Lobby. For me, that store is very problematic, and I will hopefully never find myself buying from there. And yet, I have similar concerns with actions taken by, by the owners of Lowe's and Home Depot. Uh, but I sometimes really need to go to a hardware store, and the only ones that provide provide those items in an inconvenient way are those 
two close by stores. So I cannot blame Jack for going to, going to get a model for his grandson from Hobby Lobby and hope that I can be forgiven for going to Home Depot. Uh, we all have to set our own boundaries that we are comfortable with. Let's face it, as much as I like to think I am the most important person in the world, the owner of Hobby Lobby has lost no sleep over my refusing to purchase or even enter his stores. So back to J.K. Rowling. For my Myself, I do not think I can separate her remarks from her works. I will not, as previously planned, look forward to sharing Harry Potter with my grandkids. And that is okay. There are many other creative books to share. I, for example, loved reading the full series of the Wizard of Oz books. Yes, there's more than the one, and the latter ones were quite fascinating to me. That being said, I will listen to all your future crossovers and I will not judge any of you or anyone else if they find a spot they are comfortable with that includes the wonderful literature written by what appears to be a questionable human being. Having said all of that and reducing my effect on boycotting someone or something, and rightly so, as an individual, here is a story of a boycott I did participate in in my own little way and at least in part resulted in a major corporate change. I believe it was back in the 70s that Cracker Barrel had an anti-gay, anti-black well, they did not state it in such, but it was not, it was known as such policy that resulted in a massive ongoing boycott. I, I simply kept away from, for literally decades. And one day on, on travel found it to be convenient to go to and decided to check it out. They now have a clearly stated anti-discrimination policy that is written in all of the restaurants. I can attest they do have this posted up. Nice. Uh, here is what I found through Google as an example of the issue and resolution. According to news reports, at least 11 employees were fired under the policy on a store by store basis from locations in Georgia and other states. After demonstrations by gay rights groups, the company ended its policy in March 1991 and stated it would not discriminate based on sexual orientation. And apparently last year, they actually banned a homophobic pastor. So we all should pick our battles and find where we can best navigate this complex complex thing we call life. Thanks again for handling the conversation so well. And please share this with appropriate personal history about me to the weird sisters, Joanne, as always such a wonderful, thoughtful, and amazing email. Even the categories. Yes, she does. Yes. <laughs> here, 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 here. Yeah, I agree. And, no. uh, well, part of me does find it sad that, you know, uh, Joanne can't share Harry Potter with her grandkids like she was planning to. It's like I, I totally respect her reasons why, and I, I agree that I think um, thing situations like this are very complicated, and it is important uh, for people to set clear personal boundaries as to what they feel comfortable with in terms of separating the art and the artist. And uh, I think uh, she made a really good uh, made her point very well. Yeah. yeah. And as she said, there are other stories. Exactly. There are other offers and, and books and, and there will continue to concentrate to on those ones. And there will be more that haven't been written yet. Exactly. All right. So I think that that is going to do it for us for tonight. Um, we have another email from Joanne about reclining on the planes, but I have to admit uh, that that was not the first bit of feedback that I got about our stance last week. And, okay. I, really? Hmm. Spoiler alert. I don't know. Maybe I'm an asshole for telling the dude to get the fuck over it. But that will have to wait until next week. Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, for all of our show last week, I thought that we would get more emails about the TV show stuff. Um, or more feedback about the TV show stuff. And it seems like the reclining thing had more of an impact on people. Interesting. Yeah. You just never know what people are going to respond yeah. to or react to. Yeah. What's going to strike a nerve in a, mm -hmm. everyone's collective conscience. Yeah. But yeah, so um, you'll have to stay tuned to hear what Joanne had to say about 
us reclining, but I don't know. We'll find out next week. Uh, <laughs> but on that note, guys, thank you so much for listening. Thank you to the patrons who uh, came out tonight. If you'd like to become a patron at the bonus level, uh, I, I hear that, you know, you might be due for two bonus episodes to drop <laughs> back to back. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody may have recorded one, I don't know, four weeks ago. That's <laughs> got to get released. That will be out shortly, I promise. Um, but yeah, so if you'd like to be a patron, patreon.com slash Jack. You're going to go to janejack.com, click on the Become Patron link at the top right-hand corner of the page. Uh, if you'd like to go to the Am- uh, shop through our Amazon affiliates link, you can go to janejack.com slash Amazon, all lowercase letters. Uh, if you would like to get your Team Science Team Universe broadcast mug you can go to uh, janejack.com slash store god i hope that that's what it is i haven't said that one in such a long time um <laughs> send us an email at the broadcasters3 at gmail.com or uh give us a call at 331-276-2373 thank you to the patrons that contribute at a certain level and that would be uh tack from tokyo eckhart rickner maggie the magnificent uh joanne with the plan uh, Drake, the Destroyer of Time, and Ed, the Creepy Mailman. And now, um, if nobody else has anything, <laughs> we can all say goodbye now, and I will play us out with my favorite thing the internet has ever gifted us, and that would be <laughs> at least part of, I'm gonna, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I will play at least the first like minute of the remix of the Christian Bell rant. So, does anybody else have anything? No, let's uh, nope. let Mr. Bale uh, play us out. All right. Well, on that note, my name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Jenny. All right. Well, um, I would say peace out, guys. But honestly, I just want to know, what don't you fucking understand? <laughs> you want me to go fucking trash your lights? Do you want me to fucking trash them? Fuck! And what the fuck is it with you? I was looking at the lights. Fuck! And what the fuck is it with you? I was looking at the lights. <laughs> The what the fuck is it with you? I was looking at the light. Fuck! What the fuck is it with you? I was looking at the light. It's fucking distracting. Oh, good. It's fucking distracting. Oh, good. It's fucking distracting. Oh, good. It's fucking distracting. Well, that's going to play us out. <laughs> I love that. Ending on a positive note. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Shandy, happy birthday again. Happy birthday. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Bye.